Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a review on 1921 by Morgan Llewellyn. This is the second book in the Irish Rebellion series by Morgan, but I bought this first and it took a really long time to find any type of copy other than ebook. I don't read ebooks. So I was trying to find physical copy for months. And I couldn't find the physical copies for all the other books either <sighs> until I finally got this one. And so I read it first and then magically 1916 and 1949 came out and they're brand spanking new. So I, I don't know what was going on there. And then I also had a lot of trouble finding 1972 and I'm stuck on 1999. I have quite a few issues <laughs> finding these books. And so I wanted to do a whole series for March for St. Patrick's Day. Can't do it. I can only do one book and then I'm going to read 1916 next. I have it on my to read bookshelf. So I'm trying to just get everything done. Maybe in March, probably not because it was so hard to find physical copies and I have um, headache like migraine issues when I read on a tablet so that you know I just wasn't going to do that even for the March St. Patrick's Day theme. So I'm going to try my best for the other ones, but at least we have for today 1921. Now this follows a young journalist by the name of Henry and this the this few years period 1921 and a, like as far as I'm aware like a little a few years before, a few years after. It's the lead up to the separation of Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland and Great Britain and then the Civil War after. So though that's the main thing going on. Oh yeah and um, Michael Collins being assassinated. So it's really let's just say 19 19 to 19 22 ish 1923 i'm surprised that morgan didn't give a clearer picture of the timeline and that's one thing that i was a little eh, not like on board with her took a little bit like a few pages no actually more than a few pages probably like 25 or something pages until i realized this isn't, it doesn't start out in 1921 and it doesn't end in 1921 either. It goes on for a little bit. Now the other three books, I believe after this one, is going to be really all about the troubles, but this is about the start of the separation and the civil war. And uh, 1916, which is technically the first book in the series, that is the Easter Rising, the rebellion that was squashed by the British. The Easter Rising is a little bit more known. The Civil War is not as well well known. The Troubles is, a, is more well known because of how violent it was and how long it lasted and how many people were killed. Irish and British alike. I know there's a lot of people that remember or like have some sense of the IRA because of that famous uh, picture of an IRA, the after effects of a bomb in England. I think it was a professional building that killed, you know, many people. This book is a lead up to the troubles and I gave this book five out of five stars, but it's a low five because the timeline wasn't very clear. I had to take a moment to step back and say, okay, wait, this is not 19, we're not starting in 1921, we're starting a few years before. 
and that wasn't really mentioned unless you read between the lines and you really know what what's going on in the world scene because there's talks about war one so that's your your hint and also I did not feel much for Henry himself could have been the writing of it and it was it's a bit disjointed in the fact that it's him Henry going about his life during this time and if you know what side he's going to take but then there'll be huge chunks of historical information that he's like he's kind of talking about but it kind of goes into like a a different like a godly narrator as Henry is pushed aside which is a little weird <laughs> and I know I was reading comments or not comments reviews on Goodreads and they were saying the, the writing is a bit odd in that way a little disjointed and it's not written this book is not written in the same way as 1916 so I'm interested to see how that's different because people uh, it seems prefers the writing of 1916 and the storytelling of that time so I don't know why Sh Morgan chose to do it differently and I really didn't feel a connection until like more than halfway through the book with Henry who falls in love with Ella, who's Anglo-Irish. So she's mainly English, but she is Irish and she's living in Northern Ireland. And that is, I think that was an important part of the conversation because we still have problems in Northern Ireland today regarding what the English specifically did to Northern Ireland centuries ago, not just during, you know, the 18th, 19th century. No, we're going back like 1300s, 1400s. It's been a long time. Now, we, there are a lot of Irish people and Irish Americans that say it's about, it was about 700 years. Some say 750 years and some say almost 800 years. So I guess it depends on what you're talking about regarding British or English specifically rule over Ireland and that's important to know and it really goes deep into the last let's say 20 to 30 years of that where it's a little more easier a little a little more easier to understand for someone that's reading a historical fiction novel however there is so much information that Morgan put a bibliography in the back okay so it's it's hardcore I would say that it leans a little more not fiction okay so there is there are people that are made up you can you can definitely tell especially because there's like a a list of names and basic information of them in the beginning of the book so you know that there's a lot going to happen and you need to get yourself ready <laughs> so the first section are the made-up characters but then you just go at least in this version you just go page 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 of actual like historical figures and they're almost yeah well they're all mentioned if not they show up multiple times in the novel so can you keep up with that it's a little much but this book or this series is very much about the history I guess you can say modern history of Ireland and Northern Ireland and even the connection with that uh, with those two countries with England and how that has shaped that area to this day and st still what's going on well it ends this series ends in 1999 I'm sure if we're talking about like the theme of this book it might go a little maybe like into 2000 or 2001 I don't know can't find it so I can't even like skim it to figure it out but let's just say it goes a little into the 21st century 1999 does 
so it really it touches on a lot I'm sure in 1916 there's gonna be a few years that we go back into the past to better understand the Easter rising and uh, that rebellion and why they did it so there is a lot of background there's a lot of history you have to soak that in <laughs> and I believe there are quite a few history books not historical fiction but history books in the bibliography that you can read if you want to learn more and it's purely history so this has people not people it has characters in it that kind of bring everyone together you know how i mean that's how a lot of historical fiction works that's how my historical fiction books work but you just you make up characters and you bring everyone in together and then you tell the history through those made up characters so i definitely recommend it if you're interested in irish history and northern irish history and english history in connection to those two countries i know a bit more than most people but even when i say northern ireland is a country i'm going to have a lot of people get upset with me okay so if you kind of go into this world and you start talking about it and you know you talk to other people don't be too surprised when you get a lot of pushback or you get very angry people <laughs> i kind of got used to it because i saw my uh grandparents and their friends going at it a number of times during their debates about the modern history of Ireland, Northern Ireland, and England, and what was justified and what was not justified, specifically the violence during the Troubles. And if you call Northern Ireland a province or a country, or should we call it someone else, you know, stuff like that, you can go way deep, way deep. I mean, you can also get into the whole idea of did Michael Collins even do anything for Ireland and the rebellion or did he muck it all up like you have a whole conversation about that as well my hands falling asleep but I remember in one of my uh, cinema classes we watched Michael Collins there's a lot of people that don't like Michael Collins there's a lot of people that do my do like Michael Collins so then there was supposedly and I don't I don't know when the time like the time was but there was supposedly said by my professor a relative of one of Michael Collins's enemies he remembers her saying Michael Collins didn't do shit <laughs> and I was like well of course you're gonna say that because you're supposedly related or like like a direct descendant of the one of Michael Collins' enemies. It's a very intriguing and could be thought-provoking person and, you know, based on his actions and who he was just as a regular person, but then, you know, his decisions and all of that during uh, the start of the Civil War and a little bit in there. Uh, he was assassinated. Thank you so much for watching my review on 1921 by Morgan Llewellyn. I hope you have a great day and happy reading. Bye!